Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our program Reflections on the Glorious Quran, a program dedicated to understanding the meanings of the Quran and trying to uh, unfathom uh, and to understand its beautiful message. The message that is truly life transforming. The message that really changes our lives for the better. Okay? That is the glorious Quran, the book brought by our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today I want to really talk about, you know, what is success? What is accomplishment? What is achievement? Who are the successful people? And so I've chosen the first few verses of Surah Al-Mu'minun uh, to explore this theme of success in the glorious Quran. So our topic is being successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِدُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِزِينَ إِلَّا عَلَى أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنْ ابْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَأَهْدِهِمْ رَاؤُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ أولئك هم الوارثون الذين يرثون الفردوس هم فيها خالدون صدق الله مولانا العظيم These are the opening verses of the Surah Al-Mu'minun and I've titled this section as the seven habits of successful believers. The seven habits of the successful believers. So the believers have succeeded because they are humble and focused in their prayers. They avoid meaningless activities and pay zakat. They guard their chastity except with their spouses or their slave maids. And in this case, they are free from blame. Whoever seeks sexual satisfaction beyond these are transgressors. The believers are those who take care of their responsibilities and contracts. They care about their prayers and are the heirs who will inherit paradise and stay there forever. You know, this is one of the characteristics of the Quran that in the, you know, there are numerous passages where the qualities of the believers are mentioned. Where, you know, we've seen this in Surah Alif Lam Mim, Surah Al Baqarah, uh, we've seen it uh, in Surah At Tawbah, and you know, in many places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the believers. This is what a believer looks like, this is the picture, a vivid graphic description of the true believers. And, you know, look at the qualities that are mentioned. I'm sure that, you know, any head teacher uh, would want to see that his children have these qualities. Every parent would love to see their children have these beautiful qualities. Every good chief constable would love to see that the citizens of his city have these wonderful qualities because this is what protects people from doing wrong and evil. So what are these wonderful qualities and habits you know, that the Qur'an mentions about successful people? I said we wanted to talk about and explore the whole concept of, of success. So what is this concept of success? Allah says, Qad aflahal mu'minun. The believers have succeeded. Now the, the question is, what does that mean the believers have succeeded? 
Okay? The believers have achieved. The believers have actually won. Those are absolutely cor cor correct meanings of it. The believers have attained felicity. The believers have actually uh, gained. The believers have achieved. The believers have accomplished. Okay? The believers have been successful. The believers are successful. Okay? Muf you know, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Okay? And so, you know, just like the farmer who plants one seed and gets 700 or 1,000 seeds back from that one. What a wonderful way of investment, eh? Uh, you know, this is Allah's uh, makings and, you know, everything that Allah does is just absolutely beautiful, amazing, powerful. And that is why, you know, we need to actually pay attention to the nature. We need to be in the nature. And that is what will make us a strong believer, really. Being, lying down and touching the grass, smelling the scent of the blossoming flowers, under the beautiful blue sky where you can see the sun shining, hey? and you can hear the birds chirping. That, you know, will make you feel, really, closer to nature closer to reality and begin to realize the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the other hand, if you are sitting on these very comfortable man-made sofas, you know, with, you know, the TV in front of you, you know, and table full of delightful exotic juices of all kind and, 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 and food of all kind, on these uh, ex-minister carpets, okay, uh, and the uh, the, you know, the, 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 the fire is, uh, you know, burning, all right? The lights are shining, uh, and you are surrounded by worldly things. Now, I hope you can see the contrast between our, the previous scene and this scene. Eh? Here, you are surrounded by man-made things, and therefore, no wonder, you know, we get lost in that. We begin to prefer the world. يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ يُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا عَلَىٰ الْآخِرَةِ Okay? وَتُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ You know, you prefer the worldly life. تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا عَلَىٰ الْآخِرَةِ You know, you prefer the worldly life over the Akhirah. This is why, you know, coming into the nature and beginning to see the beauty of Allah's creation, inshallah, will put you in touch with that. So, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The believers are successful. Why? Because they have these great seven qualities, okay? Great seven qualities. What are they? Well, the first one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us is that they are people who are humble and focused in their prayers. I've translated the word khashir and khashirun as humble and focused people. And that's actually a very accurate uh, and, 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 and a good translation, okay? Uh, the, the focusing is, you know, concentrating, you know, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are praying. And you are showing your humility uh, and your humbleness, actually. You're showing your humbleness, your weakness in front of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first quality of the believers, Allah tells us, is they are focused people. Okay, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Secondly, they avoid all kinds of meaningless activities. Larve, okay, purposeless meaningless, uh, you know, things that really d uh, uh, you shouldn't be concerned with anyway. Okay, they avoid those things. You know, they are people who give zakat, okay? I, I mean, here I've just translated this as paying of zakat. And I can talk more about what is the other meaning of zakat, which is about purification and growth. They are growing as well, but let's just keep it to that, you know, paying zakat. The fourth one is that they guard their chastity. Chastity simply means that sexually they are pure. They do not corrupt their eyes and their, themselves, okay? Both men and women, you know, of belief are expected to be pure and clean. You know, let us, let us all pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the dangers of indecency, of, of fahisha, that is all around us. You know, this is one of the characteristics, sadly, of our society today, that there is so much pornography, there is so much wretched lewdness, so much indecency, that, you know, we have to really strive hard to get rid of it and to avoid it. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, the, the believers who have succeeded, their four quality is, fourth quality is that they are pure. Subhanallah. This is a good translation, you know, pure. Rather than, I mean, we can use chast, chaste, is, in, you know, is the proper. In other words, sexually they, they have kept themselves pure and, and, and clean, except with their own spouses, their wife or husband. Okay? And then, um, you know, the, and then it goes on to say the negative part of it, which is that whoever seeks, you know, you know, he's a transgressor who goes to satisfy his sexual desires by any other means. All right? And we have to guard ourselves, you know, very important. The fifth quality is that, you know, the believers are those who take care of their prayers. You have ala salawatihim. Okay? This is wonderful. Uh, you know, they, they care about their prayers. Subhanallah. You know, it's interesting. Ya Allah, you've already mentioned that they are khashi'un in their prayers. Why mention this again? Again, it is to show us that, look, prayer is so important. You know, prayer is actually the essence of the believer's uh, life and, and, and believer's uh, everything, really. And then it goes on to say, Ulaika humul warithun. These are the heirs. يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْضَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Okay, uh, but before this, you know, it, 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 so that's the fifth quality. The sixth one is that they also care, take care of their responsibilities and contracts. وَأَهْدِهِمْ وَأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَأَهْدِهِمْ رَعُونَ Okay, um, you know, we, we can take this to be two things. So that is where the seven comes. The sixth one is they take care of their amanats, their trusts. Uh, and the seventh one is that, you know, the, um, the responsibilities that they have been given, they are honest about it. You know, they work honestly. Uh, when they are given the work to do, they are honest about it. You know, they don't cheat. Uh, so, uh, they are the heirs, successors. Uh, inheritors, okay, they will inherit the Yarithun al Firdos, Humfiha Khalid, they will inherit paradise. The idea of inheritance and being the heir is very simply the fact that, you know, they become the owners of it. Okay, in the hereafter, Allah will make us the owners. You know, we won't be there uh, like in a hotel, okay, um, or, 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 or a bed and breakfast. You know, Jannah is not like a BNB or a hotel uh, accommodation. No, no, no. It is actually your property. And why, does, why do we need to know this? Well, you know, when you are leasing something or hiring something, it has a different kind of feeling than when you own it. When you own, you feel at home. You know this is your home. You will love it. You will relish it. You will cherish it. Whereas, you know, if it is something just on, on hire, on lease, then it totally changes your psyche, you know, your way of looking at it, the way you relate with it, and the way you appreciate and value it. The pleasure is far less. Subhanallah. You know, this is why we human beings often want to possess things, you know, we want to own things. Subhanallah. My dear listeners and viewers, you know, we're talking here about success. Let me just take you back to this wonderful um, passage, beginning, opening passage of Surah Al-Mu'minun, you know, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about the believers. You know, what is it that makes the believers so special? What is it that makes them so wonderful? Uh, and the Quran is saying that they are successful, they have accomplished, they have achieved. All right? They've achieved. And the, the reason, you know, for their accomplishment is these seven very powerful qualities. The first one it mentions is that they are focused, they, are, they really are dedicated and devoted when they pray, subhanAllah. You know, let me just share a story with you here. This is about Sayyidina Abu Talha radiallahu ta'ala an, one of the disciples of Rasulullah. Abu Talha owned um, a wonderful orchard in Medina. And one day he was praying in this orchard. The orchard you know, is, is the garden uh, where fruit trees are. 
And, but this orchard had, of course, palm uh, trees, the uh, date trees all around it. It had, um, you know, of course, grape uh, vineyard, you know, um, and, and, and many other, uh, you know, vegetables uh, and, and, and even uh, crops uh, like uh, wheat and, and, uh, and, and corn. So it, it's a very valuable um, commodity that he owns, Abu Talha. He's enjoying the, uh, his prayer. Uh, he's praying uh, in, in, you know, in the coolness of his orchard. Now, any of you who's been to Medina Sharif and Mecca Sharif knows how hot it is. But when you, as soon as you walk into the orchards, I used to walk from Masjid al Nabwi to uh, Masjid al Quba often. And, and on the way, you know, there are several orchards. And if you just walk into them, it's totally different from outside. It's as though there is an AC going. There is an AC, an air conditioning system. And it is, subhanAllah. You know, it's, it's cool. Uh, it's very comforting, relaxing. So Abu Talha is praying in this very relaxed, comfortable, uh, air-conditioned, uh, beautiful uh, orchard of his. And suddenly a bird chirping in the tree attracts his attention and distracts him from his prayer. So Abu Talha forgets what he's praying, how many rakats he has done. And after he's finishing his prayer, he's very embarrassed uh, and, and goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and says, Ya Rasulullah, today this happened. I was distracted from my, from my prayer because of this orchard. Therefore, Ya Rasulullah, I want to dedicate, I want to give this in sadqa, my, my garden of berha, I want, this is the name of it, I want to give it to you, Ya Rasulullah, as sadqa. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, wonderful. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then later on, we know, distributed that garden amongst the relatives of Abu Talha. We'll talk about that in a minute, but what is really fascinating here is Abu Talha is praying and he gets distracted by the bird. And what does he do? He gives it all away. He says, my prayer is very dear to me. My prayer is far more valuable than this garden, subhanAllah. You know, this is what made the Sahaba you know, so wonderful and so special. You know, their prayers were full of concentration. And this divine longing, you know, this desire to seek Allah's closeness through the prayer is something, you know, which we are constantly reminded of. And, you know, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an uh, is another, there's another story about him. And, you know, once Hazrat Ali was struck by an arrow in his leg. And, you know, when an arrow strikes you, and it goes inside you, to take it out is even more painful and hurting. You know, as it, as it destroys and as it sort of um, crushes uh, and as it sort of, you know, tears the muscles. So, you know, Azat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, and his friends are, are just now uh, thinking, how do we remove his um, arrow in, in, in a least painful manner? So Ali radiallahu an suggests to them, listen, there is one time and there is one situation when I am oblivious of myself, of my body, and that is when I am in my prayer. So when I pray, then remove the arrow as you like. Subhanallah, you know, they didn't have an anesthetic in those days, you know, that would numb the pain and, and, and you can take it out, but subhanallah, you know, may Allah bless Sayyidina Ali, he goes into his salah, he prostrates and the, uh, his friends pull out the arrow and he carries on with his prayer. Subhanallah. You know, this is khashi'oon, this is concentration, this is true focusing on the prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflah al -mu'minun. Believers have succeeded. Who? Those who are who have this concentration in their prayers, you know, who are focused people. And, you know, in worldly life as well, the businessman who succeeds is the one who is actually focused on his business. The, uh, the, the diplomat who succeeds in his career is the one who is focused. The civil servant who succeeds is the one who is focused. The chief executive 
is the one who has been focusing on his business, on his development, really. So focusing and concentrating, you know, is really the essence of every kind of success. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst these uh, believers, you know, who have these wonderful qualities of being focused, of being, you know, givers of zakat, people who really, um, you know, keep themselves chaste and pure, uh, and people who are, have sense of responsibility and guard their trusts. May Allah make us amongst those. Wa akhru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allah.